Okay. Well, still just nine. Is Shabra in? Two, three, four. We do have five, a quorum. Six. All right. We do. Seven. All right. Yeah, just I knew Shabra needed the link. And so Eight, we'll just. Uh, Nine. And then uh, Don's system just crashed, so we need to give her a few minutes to get back up up okay. on board here. All right. Well, it's just just barely nine, so oh, nine oh one. So we'll just uh, give it just a second here for Don, and also I just sent the link to Shebra Also, perfect. Thank you. All right, and watching for Don to come in as well. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think about that this morning, but uh, it is likely that our system could go down. <laughs> right, and I think we've all seen that uh, Metro's been dealing with some extreme challenges in the IT section, so we will be understanding. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, you know, we've got that announcement on the agenda that if Zoom doesn't work, that, you know, there's a call in number so people can call in and it doesn't have to stop True. the meeting. All right. True. Thank you. And let's see, do we have Dan Henderson? Oh, yeah, there he is. All right. I think just Don, right? Once we get Don and Shebra in. Shebra's in. Shebra's here. Right. Good. All right. Yeah, well, we're just I'm waiting already... for Don. Yeah. And Donna, let me know when she is here. I'm trying to watch in case I miss. Yeah. Having a fun week, Isaac? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not fun. I was being facetious, obviously. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> We're sympathizing. Well, interestingly enough, I was uh, on vacation in Maui <laughs> when this whole thing went south. So, Where were you? Yeah, Maui. Oh, wow. I was, in, I was in Lahaina with some friends. And, uh, of course, I also had the joy of uh, getting ye old COVID. So, I'm oh. on vacation. So everybody, everybody did this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it can't come through the screen, can it? Yeah. Uh. Uh. Anyway, so fortunately, uh, uh, the team was able to get things back in order. Are you Are you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm actually feeling fine. It was not as uh, it was the probably the Omicron variant. Uh, so just flu-like symptoms, that sort of thing. So I'm. I'm on the tail end of it, so I'm getting better. <laughs> Good. Well, and, and you know, I have friends who have, have who have got it. Who Dawn, Dawn's here. Child. Oh, good. All right. Good morning. Our, my apologies. That's all right. It, uh, not your fault. Yeah, major system issues. I had to do a hard reset. Okay. Well, I'm. If everyone's ready, I'm going to call the Santa Cruz Metropolitan Transit District. Board of Directors meeting of uh, January 28th to order. And um, our uh, first order of business is why we need Don here, particularly, is a swearing in of our directors. Yes, thank you. Good morning. Um, so we are swearing in the following reappointed board members. Dan Henderson, representing UCSC. 
Shebra Kalantari Johnson, representing the city of Santa Cruz. Manu Koenig, representing County of Santa Cruz. And Alta Northcutt, representing Cabrillo College. We are also swearing in two new, more, two new board members, Rebecca Downing, representing County of Santa Cruz, and Ari Parker, representing the city of Watsonville. So with these six directors, please unmute themselves and raise your right hand and repeat after me. Um, I will start by saying I, and then if you each can please um, state your name, and then as a group, you'll repeat after me. Okay, so we'll start, I. Ari Parker. I. Rebecca Downing. Manu Koenig. Alton Northcutt. Deborah Calantari Johnson. Did we lose Dan? Dan yes. Henderson. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I, all of your names, do solemnly swear to affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution. <laughs> Dawn, you use you, you shorter phrases. They won't follow. <laughs> I'm sorry? Use shorter phrases for them to follow you because it's too... Oh, no, no, no. They've already stated their names, so then I'm just going to read. Um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they, oh, so they need they, they need, need to repeat after you. Yeah. They, okay. So, so just do like half a sentence and then they'll repeat and then, yeah. You can't remember all of that really quick? No, I'm just kidding. Well, I was working <laughs> on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I, and then you already said your names, do solemnly swear or affirm. Do you solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support, that I will support and defend the Constitution, Constitution of the United, United States. States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution, and the Constitution of, of the State, State of California. California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against, against all, all enemies, foreign enemies and, and, domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith, true faith and, allegiance and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, <laughs> to, the, to the Constitution of the United, of the United States. States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and, and the Constitution, and the Constitution, of, the Constitution of, the of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation. I take freely, this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental, without any reservation, mental reservation or purpose of evasion. of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And, and that, that I will well and faithfully, well and faithfully discharge. discharge. The duties upon which I am about to enter. The duties the upon, duties upon, upon I am about which to enter. I am about to enter. Wonderful. Congratulations and welcome and welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was the first swearing in I've seen on Zoom. <laughs> and definitely interesting, but not as I wish we could all be in person to applaud you all. Say thank you. I do see a hand, um, although I just don't see something for the public to comment, but I will call on Brian. Brian, did you intend to have your hand up for the swearing in? Yeah, thank you. This is Brian from Trail Now. Thank you for um, allowing us to make a public comment. Trail Now is a large organization. We've been around for 10 years, uh, thousands of local supporters. We actually supported Measure D. We initially came out opposed as a PAC because of the language in it. It had a, a lot of money towards the train and towards giving money for a new train station in Monterey, and it was adjusted. And we became a big supporter, and, and we're glad that it, it passed. And so we switched from a, a post pack to a, a supportive pack. And recently, we supported, did a lot of the volunteer work for uh, the Greenway Initiative. But what I wanted to uh, communicate to the Metro Board is um, thank you for allowing us to speak about the Santa Cruz Coastal Corridor and the importance of applying the federal rail banking process to preserve it for future public transit and opening the interim coastal trail now. The Santa Cruz Coastal Corridor is one of three transportation corridors, Highway 1, 
SoCal and Coastal that are critical for our community. All three corridors need to be open to allow for effective transportation across the county. Opening the coastal corridor for tra active transportation has been shown to be the most effective use of the corridor to improve mobility across the county. In order to protect and preserve the public resource for transportation, the federal rail banking process must be applied. The federal rail banking process has been applied hundreds of times across America to preserve transportation for core, transportation corridors for future public transit. To protect this publicly owned resource, RCT executive director must be authorized to apply federal rail banking process. Authorizing the executive director to negotiate with private companies is needed to protect this valuable public, publicly owned transportation corridor. We ask the Metro representatives on the RTC board to support the executive director's the recommendation to apply federal rail banking process to Santa Cruz Coast Corridor. Thank you for your time and happy Friday. So I think that was the public comment for item yeah, seven. It, uh, I know. And so instead of um, speaking at that time, uh, Brian, that was your opportunity that would normally fall under oral communications. This was anyone wanting to comment was only on the swearing in, congratulating our new directors. Uh, next, we have roll call. Donna? All right. Um, Director Downing? Here. Director Dutra. Present. Director Colin Perry Johnson. Present. Director Koenig. Here. Director Lynn. Here. Director McPherson. Here. <laughs> Director Myers. Present. Director Pegler. Here. Director Parker. Here. Director Peterson. Present. Director Rockin. Here. Director ex officio Director Henderson. Here. And ex officio Director Northcutt. Here. And we have quorum. All right. Well, welcome everyone and, and nice to have all our new directors joining us. Uh, we now have uh, today announcement is today's meeting is being broadcast by Community Television in Santa Cruz County. Thank you. and. Hopefully we get through our meeting with no technical glitches and you bring us good luck. So um, are there any board of director comments? Oops, I'm sorry. I, I skipped over the uh, board officers and committee reports um, assignments and that is mine. So I have um, submitted this late and I reached out to all the um, directors at that time for any suggestions and changes assignments or any input and I had heard back um, from everyone eventually. Uh, I had, Jimmy and I hadn't connected and misunderstood there. So I had gotten input before I had completed the slate from everyone else and um, I know that one of the questions has come up is I had no information on who was being appointed by the county or Watsonville at the time the slate had to be completed. And they weren't sworn in at that point. My thinking as far as I know, I've had some outreach on, on um, placing the Watsonville representative who is now uh, Mayor Parker and congratulations as an alternate is that when uh, Aurelio Gonzalez withdrew and there was Wattsville had appointed Alta, who was our ex officio um, director from Cabrillo into that position, I had no information of anyone that might be interested or, or um, involved with Metro, wanting to be involved with Metro. So, not having that input, not having someone who had, had uh, demonstrated some interest and uh, willingness to serve, I, I did move up Larry into from the alternate to the RTC position. There's been request for Mayor Parker and my um, thinking and my creating that slate 
was to allow Mayor Parker to have an opportunity to gain some experience and get to know what Metro's challenges are so that she can best represent Metro um, when on the RTC. And that certainly is um, um, something that I think has generated some conversation. So I wanted to explain, I would love to see the, the South County representation. My thinking was given an opportunity to get to know Metro and challenges. I know there are some, uh, some who wanted to have comments. So if I can, I think at, I'd open it up for a comment from the directors first. There's hands on that. Mana. Thank, thank you, Chair Lind. Um, yeah, I appreciate all the work that you have done to uh, propose these slates. It's always um, uh, one of the, the pleasures and challenges of being a chair of any of these organizations. Um, and uh, appreciate your reasoning as well. Uh, I just want, I don't know if it's uh, appropriate now, but at the, the right time, I'll uh, suggest two alternate slates. Um, one for vice chair, um, for, uh, nominating Jimmy Dutra as, uh, as vi vice chair for, I suppose, slate two. Um, and um, one alternate uh, RTC slate that would include uh, Kristen Peterson, Mike Rotkin, and Ari Parker. Um, and, um, you know, I, we, we, to your point, we've always had uh, or tried to have one representative from each section of the county on the RTC um, slate. And um, as much as I, I do appreciate the times that um, ultimately really both Mike and uh, our directors, Rotkin and Pegler have, have shown up to the RTC. It's a, those can be long and grueling meetings. Um, and, uh, but I, I think it's important that we have representation from throughout the county as, as well as uh, from elected officials where possible. Um, as opposed to appointed. Um, I, I'm excited to have uh, and, and supportive of uh, Director Pegler as our chair for next year. Thank you. Jimmy Dutra. Thank you. And I, I do want to say um, thank you, Chair. I know it is hard, you know, to putting together these slates. And, um, but I do want to, you know, make it very clear that we only have two members representing South County on this board out of an 11 member board. So it's important that you know both of our voices are, are being heard um, through all the conversations. I um, highly believe that Director um, Parker is a, um, a person who will be able to catch on quickly and represent um, our portion of the, of the county fairly. And um, her voice definitely does deserve to be on the RTC. And um, the voices need to be evenly shared across um, the entire county. So um, I, I support that. and. And I, as you know, um, I've been on this board since 2014. I took a quick break for two couple of years, but um, I, you know, having a voice represent South County on the executive board is it was extremely important. Um, we have a station down in South County that you know has to have um, a voice representing it. We have people that depend on this um, every single day. Our 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 um, our bus trips and and so um, I know that you know I would I would love to represent us as the. Um, this is uh, the vice chair if um, director uh, McPherson is okay with it and um, you know I can continue to be a big voice for all of us so thank you and Ari Parker okay I'll get thank off. you thank you director Lynn I, you know I very much appreciate the conversation that we had last week and I understood your reasoning I do know that that I, I um, you're very organized and I appreciate that too, becoming mayor. That's one of the uh, key components of, uh, of an elected uh, when you have so much to do. Um, I, I am going to say I, I feel that the proportional uh, representation for South County um, uh, is better served by Supervisor Koenig's uh, slate uh, than the slate you put forward. I am a quick study. Uh, I'm 34 years a teacher, so learning is my business. And I will be happy to meet and discuss with uh, anybody on uh, Metro uh, their points of view and representation. But uh, as, uh, as representation, I, I am here to represent South County. And I think it's very important that an elected South County voice is, is on the RTC. And I thank you very much. Um, I do also want to support um, uh, uh, Director Dutra. Um, as a uh, uh, vice chair and um, appreciate and am looking to get to know everyone that is here. Thank you for the time. And Alta. 
I want to thank you all for the opportunity, um, especially to uh, Director Dutra for the opportunity to serve on the RTC, for your confidence in me and being able to represent South County and for the opportunity to learn the things that I have learned. And I'm happy that we have folks who are jumping at the bit to be in this position, um, to get those emails, to be responsive to the community. And <laughs> I am delighted to be able to um, at any point lend my support to all of the work that we're doing for our community and our counties and as we represent, but I'm happy with the um, identifying the folks who can serve in a different capacity. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Alton. Thank you for your service. Director Rodkin. Um, <clears throat> let me say, um, I think that any members of this uh, board are capable of serving in any of these positions, but I support the uh, Chair Lynn's uh, slate of nominations. I'm not going to give a long speech about it. The, I think what's characterized this board over many years and even now decades is the way in which the board operates to represent the interests of the entire county. And we've been fortunate in not having kind of uh, battles or fights in which, you know, uh, members represent the narrow interests of narrow, let's say narrower interests of their uh, particular constituencies. Uh, you know, so that, for example, when we're looking at issues of bus routes, I think the board's been very good about trying to figure out where the priorities are and not having everybody say, well, I want them in my district or I want them in my city. Um, so I support the slate that's been proposed and the logic that the chair laid out for why she made the uh, nominations that she did. That's all I wanted to say. And again, that's no, not meant in any way as a slight against the, uh, the, the alternative slate that Manu uh, proposed here. Are there any other hands? I was don't want to miss anyone. I would just like to to make one comment is, and I shared with with uh, Director Dutra. I had not listed him because last year he told me he was not really available to serve on committees and just very busy as a teacher, and I understood that, and so he's not been able to serve actually only on the one committee that uh, personnel that meets rarely. So that was a challenge, uh, you know. It, uh, in the chair and vice chair, you have many, many meetings that you're on most of the committee. So that is is definitely challenging when you have very important, don't, uh, uh, certainly don't mean to in any way uh, lessen the importance of uh, Director Dutra's teaching position, but that was one of my concerns that he addressed when we spoke. So Director Dutra. Well, I, I appreciate your comments, but I have also served as chair, so I understand what the responsibility is as a chair and as a vice chair. So um, I just felt your remarks were a little bit condescending, and you know, I would hope that we could all work together. But your your slate actually cuts out all of South County from any position. So I hope that the board members can see that. Thank you, Director Dutra. I did not mean it to be condescending. Just explaining my thinking and feeling concerned with what I knew that you wouldn't be available to um, serve. And you and I've spoken, and you've told me that you've. Uh, made changes in your schedule, but I was simply re reasoning my the reason for that decision. Uh, Director Parker. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, in doing my research, it does say uh, January or February that these committee assignments can be brought forward, and and so I'm bringing it as early as this. Um, and you know, we've had a little bit of turmoil in Watsonville getting our. Our, our new, um, we have lots of new positions that are, that are happening. So we do appreciate um, the, uh, the board's patience with having seated um, uh, us today. But I, I do have to say that um, it is not about a narrow focus. I am totally about Metro. That's who I am. And uh, I have been since I was a kid and I wrote it all the time and through college. Um, and I'm not about fighting. Um, uh, for just my neighborhoods. Uh, I think uh, uh, Councilman Dutra and I uh, can say that. We work for the best interest of Watsonville, so we have a great give and take across the whole city. So that's who we are, and as electeds, that's who we'll continue to be. But we do bring a perspective from South County, not North County, but South County, specifically to the Metro and the needs of the people of Watsonville for Metro services. And Thank you, Alta, um, and great appreciations to um, Director Dutra for appointing you in the interim time uh, between uh, in our transition. 
So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Now procedurally, if I understand correctly, then we would need a motion for each of the two slates, if that's the case. Correct. Am I correct, Julie? That's correct. You you would want to have a motion and vote on each of the slates. Okay. Uh, point of order to those slate. Do those motions need to be separate for for? Yeah. Each? Is it possible just to vote like you know if, if in favor slate of one. slate one or slate two? Yes. Slate one being Donald Lynn's, the, the chair's slate, and then the Manana's slate is the second choice. Yeah, uh, that would work. One yeah. additional point of order. Uh, do we, my understanding was that we do the nominations today, but the votes on February 25th. Um, so if, we, if we're voting now, is it simply to accept the slates? Or yeah. do I have to fall backwards? Uh, let, me, let me just check. I thought we were voting on February 25th, but I thought we were voting. Yeah, I thought we were voting today. actually to pick them or. Yeah. Yeah, normally we vote in February to do the actual appointments. And this one here is just to kind of open up the nomination process. Oh, oh well, then I move we accept both slates for consideration in February. Okay. Julie, that sounds like it works to me. Yeah, yeah. that works. Okay. Um, All right. So we need a roll call vote. We have a motion. Another hand on up. Oh, I'm a sorry. Discussion? Yes. Trevor, I, I miss you. Sorry, um, I was wondering if we can have um, Director Koenig's slate posted up or just reiterated. It went really quickly. Yeah, I'm happy happy to repeat it if that's uh, okay with the chair. Um, the slate for uh, an alternate slate two for vice chair uh, of Jimmy, Jimmy Dutra. And then for the representatives to the RTC, slate two would be uh, Mike Rodkin, Ari Parker, and Christine Peterson. And then there's an all, you have an alternate also for the alternates in that case, right, Manu? Um, then, yeah, I suppose the alternates for uh, the RTC would be uh, Shebra Kalantari Johnson, uh, Larry Pegler, and Donna Lind. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um. All right, is there any further discussion on, and then before we have a roll call? Okay, I, I believe Mike Rockton made the motion. Correct. Yeah, uh, I did, Koenig. Koenig did the second. Yes. Director Koenig. Koenig. Okay, thank you. Uh, then the roll call would be uh, Director Downing. Aye. Director Dutra. Aye. Director Colin Terry Johnson. Aye. Director Koenig. Aye. Director Lynn. Aye. Director McPherson. Aye. Director Myers. Aye. Director Pegler. Aye. Director Parker. Uh, yes. Director Peterson. Aye. Director Rockton. Aye. And the motion passes. Madam, uh, Chief, Madam, Madam Chair, yes. can I also clarify by asking our legal counsel, I, I believe that people can still make another slate if they want. I'm not proposing that people do that, but that they have the legal right to uh, make the mm -hmm. proposal at the February meeting as well. In other words, they could, uh, slates could be added at that meeting as well. Is that correct? I believe it is. But I in mean, the past, yes. that's it's been the case. There's, there's no election until that meeting. So if, if folks nominate others before then or at that meeting, that's fine. And again, I'm, I don't intend to, and I was not encouraging it, but I just think people should be aware that that's an option. Thank you. Are there any comments from the public? Seeing no hands. All right. We will move next to the... Um, Next to the board of director comments, does anyone have comments on something not on the agenda? Yeah, Madam Chair, I just wanted to uh, note that uh, I forgot to introduce this uh, uh, resolution um, honoring Alex Clifford, our, our we, former CEO, and I have put that one together and I think we're gonna go to that, but just wanted to let people know it uh, got by our board of supervisors, uh, so I did it personally as a, as a board member and a member of Metro. So I think we should do that as well here. I will I will make sure I include you when we get down to the uh, retirements and, 
and longevity. Okay. So thank you. Very good. Thank you, Bruce. Also, any, yes. Uh, can I can I ask Dawn if she plans to say anything about the uh, funding that was just received for Pacific Station North project during her comments? Yeah, I was gonna. Then I won't say anything now. That's fine. I just wanted to make yeah. sure we got somebody announces it. Yeah, Thank you. I was. Yeah, Mike. Thanks. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure the rest of the board was a, a, aware. Um, as you all know, the Metro North, uh, well, both Metro South and Metro North um, projects have been longstanding uh, projects on the capital improvement list for gosh, I don't know, Mike, at least ten to fifteen years, I believe. Um, really good news. Uh, Metro South is fully funded and will be breaking ground. Um, in Pacific Station say South, as we call it, will be breaking ground this spring. Um, that's, uh, I believe, 80 units uh, plus the two medical clinics um, for uh, very low and low income uh, residents. And uh, we did receive 29.9 million, I believe, in funding through the um, uh, the basically a transit corridor type of funding through the state. Uh, we were awarded that this week, and that's for Metro North. Um, and so, really good news on that. That uh, brings the project, I believe, to. Um, being fully funded or very close to it. Um, and so uh, the city just wants, the city of Santa Cruz um, really, really just want to thank the Metro partnership, um, obviously, and thank Alex on his way out as well. Uh, we did a lot of work to create the partnership. The board executed an MOU. Um, and all of that has come through um, with, with great um with great news that we're on our way to getting a brand new metro station. So, Mike, I don't know if you have anything to add. But, but yeah, uh, what I would add briefly is way. just point out that on the Metro North project, two thirds of the funding of that uh, uh, twenty six with the total amount twenty nine million dollars twenty nine million dollars two thirds of that goes for housing that's affordable by people who make um, either six, below 60 or 50% right. of the median income of the county, uh, which means these, this is low and very low uh, uh, income ho uh, uh, housing. Very, really, I mean, it, nothing's affordable in the world in which we live, but it's as affordable as it gets in terms of uh, housing, in terms of federal guidelines. So it's really great that there's going to be some actual affordable housing built as part of a significant percentage of this housing project, not 10% or 15%, but about yeah. two thirds of it. It's really yeah, great. and actually both projects are realizing um, almost the full amounts of housing that we were anticipating in the initial design. So again, Pacific North and South are, you know, they're, they're a combined project that, you know, really we needed Metro support to, to do those uh, property trades as well as, you know, reorient the infrastructure and various other improvements. So. Um, also want to thank John Ergo. I know that he has been working with our staff very, very closely and um, helped put out a very complicated grant to the state. Um, also want to thank um, Assemblymember Stone and Senator Laird. Uh, he's very support both of both of our state representatives were very supportive and helpful in um, helping get this funding. So reason to celebrate. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh both Director Rodkin for bringing it up and Don for the uh, report. Uh, Director Dutra. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to first say uh, thank you to Alta who filled in last year. Um, your voice on Metro was um, big and you really were a great and fair representative. So I say, wanna say thank you and I appreciate you and all of us in South County appreciate you for stepping up. So thank you. And then also to welcome the new directors. So, you know, Director Downing and Director Parker, welcome aboard. And, um, you know, I look forward to a, a good year with all of us. Um, I also wanted to ask a quick question. Uh, are we, I know, I know that um, later when Labor speaks, are we going to be able to comment when Labor speaks on their, wh whatever they say, or do they, yeah. we will I, be able to? Yeah. So I, under the Brown Act, um, you know, you're not supposed to have a substantive debate, but you can briefly comment whenever you receive public comments. Great. Thank you, Julie. Okay. Any other comments and any comments from the public? Let me see. All right. Let me make sure I'm not missing hands. A lot of screens to check. Okay. Um, so next will be the... Uh, 
Are there any other, we have oral and written reports from uh, board of directors. So are there any further reports other than what we have listed? Um, there were a couple of emails that I forwarded on to you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And any comments from the public? I see no hands. This is a chance for the public to comment on items that are not on our agenda today. Yeah. Yes, it is. If, uh, as Director Rodkin said, if you have any comments on items not on the agenda, this is your opportunity and looking for, if there, I see no hands raised. Okay. So we, are there any alteration? Oh, no, labor, and, or, okay, no. Recording in progress. I, I think I, Jordan, I believe I hear you, Jordan Fasconis. I think you hear Bruce because he's, he's oh, muted. Okay. I think you heard him. All right. If I'm, I'm going to pause. All right. We'll go to James and then come back to Jordan. James Sandoval. And James, you're muted. James Sandoval. Are we sure they're not being muted by us somehow? That's what by I'm wondering. Somehow? We are having challenges with IT, so. Kingston, is there anything on your side that you can see? Sorry, my internet was bad. I took me out. I will promote him now. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hey. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. All yes. right. Um, I was counting on Jordan speaking first, but I'll, I'll do my best to try to capture what we were bringing up for you. Um, as you all saw, we, we sent a few emails to you all. Um, and, and, and specifically a letter in support of um, PERB legislation, which is the Public Employment Relations Board. And what they are is a expert agency designed in conflict resolution and making sure employers and employees are always bargaining in good faith. To give you a little bit of background, private sectors uh, unions have something similar called the National Labor Relations Board and public sector unions um, have the Public Employment Relations Board. And for some odd reason, uh, transit agencies were not included in PERB's jurisdiction for unfair labor practice mitigation. And we're hoping to resolve that with you today. Um, what that would do is allow us recourse to remedy unfair labor practice disputes. And I think we captured what it is in the letter of support that we provided to you all with 184 signatures from Metro staff. And um, Basically, it's nothing but beneficial for Metro to be covered under an expert agency that's designed literally for conflict resolution. Um, and I didn't emphasize this, but it, it is free. And the alternative right now is for uh, us to um, send it to a superior court where it could be very costly and take a lot of time for the appeal processes. Uh, there should be no logical reason to not support this unless you enjoy a position of power and like to keep the upper hand on workers or you plan on committing unfair labor practices and not bargaining good faith. The reason I say that is because it's literally there just in case 
either side ever needs it or if either side ever hits the wall. Um, even though there should not be <clears throat> any logical reasons to not support this, there has been some have been some arguments and concerns brought up regarding PERB. And just to be clear, these are not concerns. Um, these concerns were not for Metro workers. And I want to give you my responses today. So first, first point of argument is that having PERB would make it difficult to find another CEO general manager. I spoke to the recruiter and we have many applicants for the CEO manager position already. It should not be a deal breaker for anyone applying unless they have bad intentions like committing unfair labor practices or not wanting to meet the workers in the middle. We shouldn't lower our standards for the sake of getting more applicants because we don't do that for drivers. We need to find the right leader for Metro that will bargain in good faith, and that leader should not be concerned over PERB if they're already planning on meeting Metro staff in the middle because PERB is only there when we need it. The next one is the next CEO should decide. We have a petition with literally 184 signatures from Metro workers requesting to be under the jurisdiction of PERB, which was submitted to you all. This is nearly all of Metro staff. The board of directors are in charge of Metro and you have an opportunity right now to put something in place where man, all Metro managers and Metro um, and the unions are always bargaining in good faith. Another argument that we've heard is that it's too short notice. I brought this up last year. Senator John Laird is committed to putting this into legislation, but as you'd imagine, it was strongly opposed by Alex Clifford. Um, John Laird wanted support from both sides and he was uncomfortable pushing it forward unless we both supported it. So he told me to wait till this year to see if what we can do. In the meantime, he came up with a deal with Mike Brocken, the board of you know, the board chair at the time, for him to help help mediate all potential unfair labor practices, which my, Mike, to his credit, did help us out with one. And now let's imagine if Mike wasn't there or all the other board members were too busy serving their community. PERB will resolve that. The other reason, um, we want PERB now because there are 16 transit agencies in California. Three of them have moved into PERB. A couple of years ago, a transit agency was turned away due to funding issues. And from my understanding, VTA and the union there are about to propose to be covered under PERB too. And they are a much larger transit agency than we are. And PERB is a publicly funded agency. So there are funding issues. We need to move into it now before it becomes more difficult later. The other argument I've heard is that BART and the union have had more disputes since they've gotten PERB. They just got PERB back in 2020, and BART and their workers had so many disputes that it led to a strike before they got PERB. BART did what we are asking to do, which is to be covered under PERB for unfair labor practice protections. I did a public records request and found only one minor charge since they've gotten their legislation, which was back in 2020. It seems to have fixed BART's problems in the union's relationship because there are no more outstanding issues or disputes. The other argument I've heard is that we don't want a third party involved to remedy disputes. Unfair labor practice mitigation should not be contingent on the relationship with the next CEO or any board member for that sake. We need to take ourselves out of the equation and put something in place where we can always resolve disputes free of charge. I do want to emphasize PERB is only there if we need it. It does not change how we uh, resolve disputes internally. It's literally there only when we hit the wall. Uh, they only get involved when either side hits the wall. Each board member is busy serving the community and all you sh and you, sh all, you all don't have to mediate every dispute. You know, PERB is a place where board members can direct either side if you don't have the time to mediate and we will continue to do everything we can to remedy it internally. We just want the ability to have recourse when we need it. The other argument that I've heard is that we haven't had enough problems to justify bringing in PERB. Why do we need, why wait? This is a preventative measure to make sure that both sides are always accountable. We, should ha we shouldn't have to have so many issues to justify either side doing this. And the last one is that it takes forever to resolve disputes. Like I mentioned earlier, it is better than the alternative, which is a lawsuit in superior court, which could take longer and cost a lot more. The superior court also has an appeal process, which could drag on disputes even longer, and they don't have the same experience PERB does with employer labor relations, plus PERB is free. So PERB is an expert agency that has decades of experience resolving unfair labor practice claims. PERB was created back in 1967 to help to make sure employers and employees were all getting along. 
I mean, it's in the name, uh, the Public Employment Relations Board. Uh, we have nothing but good intentions bringing this forward because we can, because because uh, the, the Metro workers are committed to always bargaining in good faith. Um, I'm hoping that we could get the same commitment from the Metro Board of Directors. And waiting another year is not the solution. We need to do this now. And since our opportunity was, um, since our opportunity was taken away to present this to you, for you all to have a discussion and to vote on this, and it was removed as an agenda item, California Senator John Laird and I came up with an agreement where we could get majorities, if we could get majority signatures from you all, Metro Board of Directors, on a letter committing yourself to labor relations by supporting legislation that will bring Metro in and our unions under PERB, John Laird will submit this into legislation if we get this done. His deadline for us is February 18th. So I sent you all an email requesting electronic signatures from, um, from you, um, and, and it reads, the undersigned Metro Board of Directors are committed to labor relations and support legislation that will bring Santa Cruz Metropolitan Transit, Transit District under the jurisdiction of the Public Employment Relations Board for unfair labor practice mitigation. Please sign that as soon as possible so we can get that to John Laird before his deadline. We need Metro workers to fill the support from this board soon because morale has been extremely low for a long time now. And the unfortunate thing is people have quit and there is more talks of people, more people planning on quitting. Let's fix that. Let's, let's all be part of something spectacular and do something that's beneficial for everyone here at Metro. This will promote labor harmony. We have a chance to do it right now to bring the sense of family back to Metro by everyone here committing themselves to working with each other. Metro Board of Directors, please sign this letter of support and stand with the workers of Metro. And I do want to give a shout out to Board of Directors Manu Koenig, Jimmy Dutra, Shebra Kalantari Johnson, and Kristen Peterson for having an open dialogue and listening to our concerns. And I especially want to give a special shout out to uh, Kristen Peterson and Shebra Kalantari Johnson for already signing this letter of support, committing themselves to labor relations. We're hoping that we get the support from the rest of the board. And thank you for your time. Thank you. James, uh, Kathy is, uh, has, no, I'm sorry, missing a hand. Bonnie has a hand up next. Wait, just one moment. Jordan, um, since it sounds like it was on our end that the mistake, uh, let's elevate Jordan next. Let's go on us. Hi there, can you hear me this time? Yes. Perfect. All right, so James did a great job explaining exactly what PERB is and, you know, describing why we want this so badly. So first off, I wanna introduce myself. I'm Jordan Vasconis, for those who don't know me. I'm SEA chapter president. And um, I just wanna say, James has spent a lot of time researching this topic and has put a lot of effort into this. Um, all the information that he shared with me has been extremely just like pointing us in the right direction of why we need to do this. Um, this is a very extremely exciting opportunity for both Metro as a whole and the workers of Metro. This is a mutual benefit. And I think that even the community will feel the impact of labor harmony if this is achieved. This, um, removes the pressure of conflict resolution from the board members and costly litigation. And I think that's probably the most important aspect of why we want this. Um, it comes at no monetary cost, which I think is a very easy thing to sell. And it may not be free in the future due to the demand of representation of other agencies and other public ag agencies across California. And having this third party will definitely ensure transparency, accountability, and overall labor peace, which, you know, we're all, we're all want labor peace in this agency. And I think that achieving this or this under jurisdiction under PERB will help give us this labor peace. And, you know, we all are, are fighting for the same thing here. We're, we're trying to provide great service to the community. And this is just one step forward into getting there. So I strongly encourage any board member to hear us out and give us a support for uh, filing for jurisdiction here. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Next, Bonnie.
Kingston, are you bringing Bonnie in? Hi. Yeah, I hear you. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would just like to reiterate. Um, well, first of all, I'm Bonnie Moore, and I am a prior employee, but I am still the legislative representative from that smart local 23. Um, I've been an employee with Santa Cruz Metro up to about 30 years, and um, Metro has always been a home to me and always will be, and I have a strong connection with public transportation here in our community, as well as labor relations between Santa Cruz Metro and their employees. I, I want to emphasize the fact that um, it's been a difficult few years here with uh, communication between uh, the board management and the union, the workers here at Santa Cruz Metro. You've got a group of workers that have stepped up tremendously here over the last few years during COVID and everything else that's been going on within our community. This is an opportunity for the Metro board to take a step forward and understand that going under PERB's jurisdiction for issues that arise due to um, unfair labor practices on either ends is a huge benefit. It would go further to strengthen the relationship between your workers and the transit district, the board and the public. If there is an ability to resolve issues that do come up, um, you know, this has always been sort of a family. We're a close knit group all the way across the board. Labor harmony, the fact of having a good job, being a good employer, being a good employee is huge to the success of the transit agency. And I implore you to support this moving forward and getting it done as soon as possible. Um, we have an opportunity. We have the support of the legislature going forward. What we're looking for is the support of the board in order to go further with this. Any um, new general manager that comes into the transit agency as our new general manager, I would think would actually appreciate having this in place, mainly because it does put a little bit of distance between the board and the ability to run the agency with the employees, relationships with the management. And um, to wait would be detrimental, I believe, only because it's going to cause more friction. And if you can move forward now, which is the best time and opportunity to do so, I think it would be the best thing for both the transit district and the employees to move forward and get this done as soon as possible. Labor harmony is huge. And I think this agency deserves and needs labor harmony at this time and improve the morale and the working conditions between both the, the management, the board and the employees. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Any other hands? Donna, I do have one more thing. It's really um, disconcerting to not see all the board members and only the speaker. I don't have any control over that, but I can understand. Okay, any other questions for speakers? I see no other hands. I'll we'll bring it back to the board. Director Dutra. Thank you. Um, I first want to say I, I appreciate all of our, our bus drivers. Um, you know, I've since I've been on the board, I see them just work extremely hard for all of us, whether it was working at Cabrillo College to, you know, have the students pass a fee for um, us to maintain bus services or whether they're at events, you know, driving our buses and parades or, um, you know, a toy drives. Um, the drivers have always been there for us and they step up and, and during COVID, they were, I consider essential workers. They were on the front line. They were making sure people were getting up and down the, um, the county and across into, um, you know, Santa Clara County and into Monterey. So I, you know, I, I support our drivers and I want to say thank you for everything that you've done. I, I've, I've read this over and I, um, you know, to me, cutting costs is a is a big you know point, and um, it just seems like it's uh, mediation that's not litigious. 
And I don't know why it's something that we wouldn't want to embrace. I know here in Santa Cruz County, we've always been the first to um, you know, support ideas that may not be either popular or that are new and people are afraid to embrace, um, but um, we've done it and then everybody else in the state jumps on board. So it looks like if I'm reading this correctly, three, three um, transit districts have already um, supported this. And um, that means we're almost to 25, if we support it, we'd be 25% of all the transit districts in California will um, be using this sort of um, conflict resolution. So um, I just wanna let you know, um, James know, I will be signing this, James. Um, I will be supporting um, your efforts and um, hopefully uh, Senator Laird um, will be able to move forward with this. So you can count on my signature later today. Thank you. Director Rodkin. Okay. Um, I wanna say that um, what we're being asked for needs to be put in clear terms. We're basically being asked to have a third party oversee the way this board runs the relationship between management and the employee, the general employees of this uh, district. And I think that that's something I would be the first in line to fight for if I felt that uh, we had problems that we were not able to resolve internally. But I think going to this kind of a system requires what the phrase that from the Declaration of Independence that uses a, a bill of particulars. I think you need, you know, you have to have some evidence that there have been problems. And the idea that we should put this in place, basically have a third party looking over our shoulder as a board uh, on the assumption that we're not going to be capable of resolving the problems, any problems that exist between the uh, management and uh, employees and, uh, and the general employees of the district. I ask, for asking people, uh, us to do that, I think is not a reasonable thing to be asking for. I think if you had, like in the Declaration of Independence, they say, you know, we got, uh, we're gonna, we wanna have a revolution because King George III did this, then he did this, then he did this, there's this long list of things, and that's why we're having a revolution. This is not a revolution, just to be clear, I'm not making that analogy, but I'm just saying that a bill of particulars, and there is no such bill of particulars right now. The issues that have been raised, there have been, you know, there's always conflicts and issues between management and employees over a variety of things. All of the ones that have come up have been resolved in a relatively short period of time, despite the difficulties that we've had uh, in the recent years. And so the idea that we're going to hire a new CEO, it's going a new uh, general manager is going to come in, and they're already going to have third-party oversight because basically they can't go to their, because the board, the board that they have can't resolve these issues. I think is a really a bad statement to be making. So, as I said, if I felt like you know, we had these conflicts and we just couldn't fix them and management was not responsive, and it's not, I don't, I don't take any particular credit for this. I think any of our board members would be happy to step in and try and when the union calls them. And we don't have a, we have a very union friendly board. I think that's pretty clear. And if you ask the union to comment on that, they would, I would assume they would tell you that that's the case. Um, our drivers, for example, are paid among, within the top 10 driver pay in the United States of America. And so we're paying salaries that are at the level of cities like San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, um, for a relatively small transit district. We have a benefit system that nobody parallels um, in terms of what's offered to our, our employees. I won't go on the long list. But if it, you know, again, if there were a list of particulars, things that are like, here's this problem, we couldn't get it resolved and we're being forced. For example, curb steps in when you have a, a problem where there's a, you know, the union asks for information about something. We'd like the following information. And the management says, no, you're not, well, you're not welcome to have it. And they think, well, our contract gives us a right to that information. Well, if the board members can't, you know, either collectively or individually get management to give you know, the uh, union whatever reasonable information they're asking for, you know, then in fact, we'd be in a situation where we probably need to go to PERB. But you go to PERB after you have problems, you look for some third party to regulate your employee-employer relationship after their problems. You don't go, well, we might have some problems in the future. We might have these different kinds of issues. Um, and I have, to, I have to say, I don't think we're looking for the uh, concern here was not that we wouldn't be able to recruit additional people to the list of uh, um, uh, general manager applicants. We, we have a, our applicant list is already in. I can report that the three of us serving on that committee um, were narrowing the list already. We're not looking for additional applicants. But if James had reported fully what the, uh, the uh, recruiter has been telling us, 
he does think that the people, including the ones that have already applied, and the, we have some very promising applicants, I think, that they would be concerned that they're going to be stepping into an agency that already has third-party oversight. What's going on in this district that they need third-party oversight, that the board itself can't resolve the issues going on between management and labor? So I don't support this. I'm a strong union activist, and I would be the first in line to support it if we had these kinds of problems and they were not getting resolved. But we've resolved these problems, even under the most difficult conditions we've had in recent years. So again, the analogy of the family was used. I think, you know, in many ways, we used to be a family and still would like to be and still have some of the elements of that. But it'd be like a family saying, let's, you know, let's go to mediation. We're not having any problems now, but let's go to mediation to see if we can find some things to like work out together and see what's going to go on. A family doesn't look for sort of mediation and third party support until there are problems, until things aren't going well. That's when you apply for that kind of support. And the idea that you'd somehow have a third party come in and to try and manage your relationship as a family before you had problems, I think is not a particularly great idea. So those are my views. I, the union is perfectly in its rights to ask for this. I have no not at all concerned. I don't, you know, it's not a bad thing for them to ask for. I see why they might have that interest because it basically gives them a stronger hand in sort of demanding things from management. But I don't think we're in a position where we need this kind of third party oversight. I think it would be a mistake to go there. Uh, that's all I had to say. Thank you very much for the time to make those comments. Thank you. I'm going to call next one correction. There are three out of 116, not three out of 16, three trans agencies out of 116 um, throughout the state. Just that correction. Kristen Peterson. Thank you so much. Um, I have also supported um, what our uh, labor groups are asking for and, and um, forgive me, Mike, I'm gonna use some of your analogies to make some of my own. Uh, here. So, you know, my thought is not that this, that moving forward with this would um, broadcast that we aren't able to take care of things. I think instead it reminds me more of, um, for example, insurance, right? For so auto insurance, we would use an example. You don't want to go out and find auto insurance once you've already been in an accident. You want to make sure that you have it ahead of time. And it doesn't signify to the world that you're a bad driver or that you're going to get in a car accident. It just means that you are responsible enough to be prepared should things happen that you didn't expect to happen. And so that's kind of what I see here. I understand the you know uh, sentiment that we should wait until there's problems to go uh, forward with PERB, but I feel like once problems already arise, then things are gonna be contentious and there's gonna be a lot less of a chance that we're willing to come to the table and say, okay, fine, we'll bring in this third party mediator now because then things are gonna, we're already gonna be butting heads. There's already gonna be feelings of you know one side versus the other and whose side are they gonna take? And I'm not sure that that would be the time to do it. I think uh, ahead of, of problems is the time to do it. And again, to the analogy of, you know, families don't go for mediation or whatnot before there's problems. Well, again, I think when you think of things like self-help books or, um, you know, couples that go into therapy, uh, you know, marriage counseling when there isn't a problem, these are all about having tools in your toolbox. That doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem. It means you're prepared should one arise. And so I, I am supporting this and I have signed on to the letter and, and I hope that uh, my fellow board members will uh, consider doing so as well. Thank you, Director Koenig. Thank you, Chair Lynn. Um, you, you know, I think the most important thing in any relationship is, is open communication. Uh, that's why I've requested this item appear on the agenda today, and, and I'm glad we're having a discussion. We are. Um, is you know, I, I, I also want to reemphasize how much I appreciate all the work um, of our union members and uh, everyone in the organization, and um, and and that's why I value communication uh, in, within this Metro family so highly. Um, you know, I guess I, I, right now I'm, I lean towards uh, Kristen's uh, or Director Peterson's analogy of this being sort of like insurance. Um, you know, we, uh, as I'm sure many of you saw, uh, there were some headlines about the county's own negotiations with uh, SEIU recently. Um, and uh, I was interested to learn while having these discussions uh, with Mr. Sandoval that the county um, and is a member of PERB. And, um, you know, I didn't see in that, um, in that process that per really stepped in and, and took over the discussion so much as it was a tool. Um, I think that we might, you know, it's, it's definitely uh, possible, if not probable, that uh, we're overvaluing that tool. Um, 
you know, I, I think it, it does take an extremely long time to resolve anything through PERB. Um, you know, my understanding is they they have quite a backlog and it could easily be four, six, 10 plus months. Um, so I don't think it's gonna be the be all and end all. Um, but uh, I guess so what I'm trying to understand is even if it's not terribly helpful, would it hurt? Um, and I would, you know, I would love to hear from anyone uh, on the board or um, staff that if they think that there's a strong reason why this would hurt uh, our ability to resolve issues um, rather than just being a, an extra tool we could resort to when necessary. Thank you. Can I just remind everybody this is not on the agenda for today for a substantive discussion. So yeah. please, please keep <laughs> comments brief. I agree. Thank you. Uh, Director Kellentari Johnson. Thank you. Uh, I will keep my comments brief, um, but I want to just echo uh, the sentiments of my colleagues, Director Peterson and Koenig. Um, you've used all the great analogies, so I won't use them again, but I do feel that this is a um, a tool and can be used as prevention to, to um, address challenges in the future. Uh, our board will change, our CEO will change, our drivers will change, and uh, this is a tool that we can lean on if challenges do occur. So I'll just keep it at that. And, and I am clearly, I'm supporting this um, right now. Thank you. Thank you. Director Northrop, or ex officio. Okay. <laughs> Um, thank you for the opportunity and thank you, James, for the well um, stated uh, concerns and uh, commentary. I am a PERB member. I am the union president. I have served as a chief steward for Cabrillo's union. I have served in a number of capacities and I have been afforded the opportunity and privilege to be covered under PERB because it was a right we were just granted. We didn't have to ask. Um, this was a kind of left out organization. Transportation wasn't included when PERB was kind of convened and pulled together. And so uh, I applaud your desire to ask for something that you should be entitled to and would have been entitled to um, if you were born years before. In addition to that, PERB standards of even stepping in are so high that they require you to do all of the work at the local level. You are required before you even come to them to do your due diligence on both sides at local efforts to make sure that the result, the, the conflict does not get to them. They are, in fact, the last stage you want to go to. So for both the employee and the employer, the best thing to do is to resolve so that the conversation about going to PERB and taking it out of your hands is not a part of the discussion. Um, this doesn't hurt anyone. I have not seen in the 22 years I have served in the capacities I have served as a union representative at Cabrillo College, I have not ever used PERB to resolve any of the issues and we've had a lot over the years. And so with respect to Director uh, Rockin's comment, most marriage therapists, family and therapists ask you to do counseling before you're married so that you can kind of get an idea of what it is and then recommend that it uh, use counseling as a kind of ongoing support, not because you have issues, not because you are preparing for issues, but to maintain relationship so that you are able to be in that place of conflict resolution. Um, thank you all for your comments and sentiments. I don't think um, this has to be whether you're pro or against labor. This is just the right they should have been entitled to if they were born earlier. Director McPherson. Yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm not uh, supportive of this uh, for the reasons that uh, Mike said that there's not particulars, but there's three other reasons, time, uh, money, and history. I mean, there's a reason why not very many agencies have this. Uh, the time it's going to take historically those that do, it just it, drag, it drags out and it costs us a lot of money. It's going to uh, require us, I think, to have another staff member or two. I don't think it's necessary. I think we can handle our own issues with the, with the union. Thank you. Director Myers. Thank you. I'm sorry, my camera's off. I'm having a little unstable internet. Um, uh, I'm happy to, to hear more in an agendized item about this. Um, 
I I do truly feel like there's there's more information needed, um, and I'm not completely clear that some of the support expressed, um, especially on the statement on the the letter that was for signature, is is completely, you know, uh, if it if that is the actual sort of stats uh, state of where you know Senator Laird is, I think we need to be very clear about. Um, what what we are searching for with this with this um, joining uh, herb and um, I think it just deserves additional additional discussion as an agendized item. I'm happy to have it show up on the agenda um, and have additional uh, discussions. But at this point, I'm still waiting to hear more and learn more um, rather than picking a side yes or no at this point. Thank you. And I'd just like to add, this was not pulled from the agenda. I received a call late from Friday and did not receive the actual any information until Saturday evening from James. And what I'd explained is that there wasn't adequate time for me to agree to put it on the agenda without staff being able to do a balanced staff report and, be, and present both a balanced report with both sides. And then my other concern is I feel that the CEO should have a voice and be able to also uh, be part of the process. So it wasn't a matter that uh, was pulled from the agenda. It was not put on the agenda, um, partly because it was last minute and then done without any opportunity to have a, a, a full staff report done. And after at, at the, uh, on a information sent me on a Saturday night when the Monday deadline. So that was, that was the background on that. And I also had some concerns on as far as uh, no cost and additional agree with director Myers there's more information I would want to see a balanced report from um, both sides and the fact that there will be fees for attorney fees that will be involved in um, responding to any perb issues so for me I would certainly want more information and and the appropriate time to do it director Koenig yes thank you chair um, I, to um, I, I would request that we add this to a future agenda uh, within, um, I would say, three meetings of hiring a new CEO. Um, and, you know, I'm, I think that will allow us to have the most balanced discussion possible. Um, you know, I, I think this board, um, that will allow us to certainly take into the consideration um, the thoughts and opinions of a new CEO. I don't think it means that we would have to um, value them necessarily greater than those of the, of, uh, the arguments brought forward by the union, um, but it'll allow us, I think, to have the most balanced discussion um, where our most members of this board will feel comfortable moving forward one way or another. Thank you. Director Dutra. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I will agree as well. Um, I think that we, you know, I will support it um, coming forward to the board for a greater discussion. Um, this should give plenty of time for our staff report. I just had a, actually a quick question. So um, on deadlines, if a deadline is on Friday, you said to get something on, should we be moving deadlines so that um, we make a deadline actually um, within a time frame that the staff can do a report? Um, because it seems like maybe there was a deadline that um, was made it unrealistic for a report. So maybe we should be having deadlines where this is the deadline. If you want something on, this gives us a, the ample amount of time to put something onto the agenda um, rather than um, having people bring forth, um, you know, agenda items within a time frame that they, you know, were they were technically within the date, but um, th we were they were told that um, there was an ample time to put together a staff report. So how do we solve that issue? How do we address it? I can tell you that um, the deadline was, James knew the deadline and um, had had the opportunity to do it sooner, but did want it, waited until after he knew um, CEO Clifford wouldn't be there. So this was an unusual circumstance that he um, knew that, in fact, he told me, I believe everything's due on Monday. And I said, you can't do um, a full, thorough staff report with that type of notice. So it's, I'm sure that staff deals with this all the time and there was no reason to, there really was no reason to avoid it. 
And, and Chair, I'll take responsibility for it. I submitted the agenda item on, on Friday, I believe it was actually at like 5 6 p.m. Um, and it was, uh, you know, my understanding um, with an, another agenda item I'll speak to in a minute on consent, um, but that was the deadline was um, Monday the uh, the 17th, I believe, but, you know, I didn't take into account that a staff report needed to be repaired, uh, prepared by that deadline. Of course, it was a holiday weekend. Um, so, yeah, I think just clarification would be helpful uh, if, if that deadline is the time by which, um, you know, the item, including a staff report, needs to be repaired be prepared, um, then so be it, and let that stand as the clarification. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we've uh, definitely gone beyond, beyond a casual conversation. Um, sorry, Julie. But I think there are no more hands. We will, um, I think we have an agreement to put it on a future agenda, and I felt the board was, I should ask that. This was a recommendation. Can I see a show of hands? Do we have a consensus for this to, uh, uh, right, to why, rather support? than take a vote? Rather than take a vote, just ask if there's objection to it. Yeah, I would say objection to uh, Director Koenig's request. I see no hands. All right, thank you. We will move to um, additional documentation on any agenda items. Are there any any further documentation, Donna? You're muted. You're, you're muted, Donna. Donna, you're muted. Yeah, everything uh, got posted in the agenda packet. All right. And um, any items on the consent agenda that uh, someone wants pulled? It sounds like Director Koenig may. Uh, nothing that I'd like to pull. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just wanted to comment on item 10.7. Um, and uh, thank you. Um, planning director John Ergo, as well as um, uh, fellow director uh, Bruce McPherson and his staff for working with me on this. This is a request uh, to our state legislators, um, uh, Senator Laird and Assemblymember Stone, to uh, carry legislation that would essentially allow for uh, billing for Metro on property tax bills, um, or what I would call Metro as a utility. Um, you know, the, the, the idea here is this would allow us to create a new transportation demand management policy uh, where we could offer new developments a chance to reduce their parking requirements in exchange for a deed restriction on units um, that says that they will pay for Metro like utility and perpetuity going forward. Um, you know, the, the need for this uh, is has been clear to me uh, in the first district here in the middle of the county where we have a, got a lot of development interest on the SoCal Drive corridor. Of course, uh, as, as um, you all know, that is really our best transit route in the county. Um, and yet still many of, uh, or actually all the stops on SoCal Drive fall short of what's determined as a, a high performing transit stop under state definition, which is every 15 minutes or less. So there's sort of this chicken and egg problem of how do we get additional state resources for infill development along high performing transit corridors if we don't have high performing transit corridors. And, and I see this as a potential solution to that where the new development will essentially agree to offer those fundings, no, um, that those, uh, those funds uh, in exchange for helping turn it into a high uh, capacity transit corridor. Um, I've done some research with our county tax collector and actually thanks to the half cent sales tax for Metro that already exists, the, the sort of financial plumbing uh, is already there for this. Um, Metro already, um, you know, essentially banks with the county. There's an account available where these funds can go. Um, and so all Metro would need to do is submit a list of the property addresses that have made these types of agreements, um, you know, every six months when the property bills go out and uh, the tax collector will add this to their roles and, and the fees would be collected. Um, and of course, if it wasn't clear, um, any property that was enrolled in the system, the, the residents would get their you know, monthly bus passes in the mail uh, so that they could use them whenever they wanted as well. They are, you know, they are getting that service. So happy to answer any questions anyone had about that. Thank you, Director Koenig. Director McPherson. You're muted, Bruce. Glad to co-sponsor this with uh, Supervisor Koenig. You know, uh, some people have complained about, oh, no, more taxes, more taxes, more taxes, but this could result in having uh, the property owners or developers uh, 
having to uh, put in more parking spaces too in their properties when they build. So I think there's that aspect to it that needs to be uh, pointed out. Thank you. Any question, any, how, anyone have questions? And our thanks to Director Koenig and Director McPherson and staff. All right, I see no other hand. Oh, oh Bruce is just on. All right, any other comments on any um, consent items or? I move the consent agenda. Should we ask the public if they have comments first? Dan yes. Henderson right. has his hand up. All right, uh, Dan. Yeah, yeah um, regarding item uh, 10.12, is Isaac Hawley available to kind of give a brief discussion of what that status and what that means? My understanding is what, that Metro is moving away from that firm, but it looks like that might be changing course a little bit. If, if you like, I could do that for you, Isaac. Either way. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so this is just, um, as you know, yes, we are moving away from that firm from that vendor, but we do have their equipment already installed in the buses. And as part of our settlement agreement with that vendor, if the new vendor takes, you know, a particularly long amount of time to get the new system installed and the old system off, then this vendor would be engaged to continually support that equipment during that period of time. We have built in several months of free support through the settlement agreement. But at a certain point, if it takes longer than we originally anticipated for that transition period, then there's just a support fee. So um, it doesn't change anything with what the direction of the agency is in our settlement. It's just a stopgap measure. If the transition takes longer, we may not actually have to pay them for that support, it only kicks in if the transition takes longer than anticipated. Got it, so this is just part of the process. Of, yeah. um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Any other questions from either? I see no, no questions no. from the public, no comments, no other from board. Sorry, Dan, that I missed you. And so, I would. I will move approval of the consent agenda item. I'll second. You... second. All right. I know that Director Rodkin was the motion. I'm not sure who was the second. Larry Pegler was the second. Okay. A few of you chimed in and I'll. All right. So we could have a roll call vote. All right. Director Downing. Aye. Director Dutra. Aye. Director Colin Terry Johnson. Aye. Director Koenig? Aye. Director Lynn? Aye. Director McPherson? Aye. Director Myers? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Parker? Aye. Director Peterson? Aye. Director Rockin? Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you. Unanimously passed. And next to the Regular agenda, which is authorizing sales tax revenue bonds under Measure G, Series 2022. Um, Chuck Farmer, CFO. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, bring a lot of good news. This is hopefully the last time I need to come and talk about bonds because now I'm requesting that we actually go forward with, with the sale on February 16th. I got some really great news that we got preliminary ratings from the S&P 500. Uh, this week, final review, final number or final ratings will be next week, but it looks like we're going to be double A, which is very, very few transit agencies, specifically bus oriented, get triple A. So that's great news. Um, so as part of this process, um, I'm going to introduce you to the, the team of individuals who are doing all the work. And like I said, this started late October, early November. And um, Hopefully this is kind of coming to the end now and we'll be good to go with funding our uh, outstanding pension liabilities. And so there's three uh, people versus Julio, who is um, our financial advisor. And then I'm gonna also have Juan talk, who is um, our legal counsel, which I think he talked at our last board meeting or special meeting. 
And then um, I'm also going to introduce you to Raul and Mike. And I think Mike's going to be doing the talking and he's going to be our underwriter. He's going to be selling the bonds. And this will happen on February 16th. So mark your calendars. So that will be the day that they go to sell. So what I'm going to do is right now, uh, you're going to be officially looking at, and you know, it's a lot of words, but just they're going to explain quickly what are the documents that are contained in the board package right now. And then from there, I'm just going to ask you to prove that we move forward with the sale of the bonds. And of course, until we sell them, we don't know the exact dollar amount uh, that we're going to sell them for, but this is, gives us an approval to move forward. So I'm going to introduce you. I think, uh, Juan, you're going to be up first. Thanks so much, Chuck. And good morning, everyone. Juan Galvan, as Chuck mentioned, uh, uh, Jones Hall is legal counsel to Metro on this financing. We've uh, taken the lead on preparing the resolution as well as the variety of documents that are before you uh, for approval this morning. Uh, in connection with the first uh, series of bonds uh, for the purpose of, as Chuck mentioned, uh, refunding Metro's obligations to CalPERS for uh, retirement benefits for district employees. Uh, the documents before you and which uh, uh, are being approved in the proposed resolution include the indenture of trust and the indenture of trust uh, at a high level really sets the terms and conditions for the bonds for your first series of bonds, the 2022 bonds, uh, including uh, payment dates, uh, the uh, source of repayment, which are your measure G revenues. And I think we talked about this at the special meeting in December, the bonds will be secured by a pledge and lean on uh, measure G revenues, which are levied by Metro under an ordinance adopted by the board in 1978. Uh, that's your half cent sales tax. Um, the second document that is being approved this morning uh, under the resolution is the form of preliminary official statement. That is the document that your underwriters will use to market the bonds. It again, summarizes the indenture. It has information regarding Metro, uh, it describes the security for the bonds. It has a uh, description of risk factors that have been identified for investors to consider, as well as general information regarding uh, Metro's finances and other demographic information about the county. And then the third document is the form of bond purchase agreement. That is the agreement pursuant to which uh, your underwriter, Ramirez, will agree to purchase the bonds, uh, that document would be signed at the pricing of the bonds. That's the February 16th date that Chuck mentioned. Um, at that point, the terms, interest rates, dollar amounts, um, and other financial provisions relating to the bonds will be set. Uh, and then approximately two weeks later, the bonds will be delivered. Uh, to the underwriter and eventually uh, sold, you know, transferred to uh, the uh, the investors themselves. Uh, I'll also mention that all of these documents are being proposed to be approved in form. Chuck and your CEO would also have authority to make any additional changes that are necessary to finalize the documents uh, in consultation with Joe's Hall and the rest of the financing team. So that that is a brief summary of the documents. Uh, before you uh, uh, for approval. Thank you. Right. Thanks. And um, we're proposing to go out with uh, bonds no more than, I think it's $53 million. So it's up to that amount and no more than. So um, when we go out on the 16th and they know the pricing and they know the amounts, that will really kind of determine how much we go out with, but it will no longer will not exceed 53 million. Thank you, Chuck. Director McPherson. Yeah, I just want to give a shout. The uh, the announcement that we're at AA rating is phenomenal. I just want to give a big shout out to the board of directors of the past uh, recent years and our former CEO, uh, Alex Clifford, for returning the ship around and getting the bus moving in the right direction. I mean, we couldn't have been there double A four or five years ago, I'll tell you. So congratulations to the board of the past and uh, to our former CEO too. Just think that should be mentioned. Thank you. 
Director Rodkin. First, I totally agree with uh, Bruce's comments, but let me ask Chuck if you could just very briefly give the, this is a compl complex issue and we've, I'm totally supportive of it and it's fantastic and I appreciate your work in making this happen, Chuck. But I wonder if you could just briefly tell the public how, what's the, you know, the order of magnitude amount of money that the district basically will be saving over the long run by, by using these bonds rather than, you know, incrementally paying these off over the years. Yeah, so uh, when we first initially came back um, in like October, we knew that we had a huge outstanding balance. The great news is that CalPERS actually had a 21% return on the money, so it actually reduced our outstanding balance. So right now we're projecting somewhere in the neighborhood of about $15 million over the course of the bonds. And like I said, that's assuming that we're at a higher interest rate than what we think we may get. Just you know, on error on the worst side. So hopefully it'll actually be more savings for the district beyond 15 million. But that's money that would go into general, either capital or um, operating expenses for the district means better service to the public. And that's why we're using these bonds as a mechanism to pay this off early in effect. Yes. Thank you. Um, Director Koenig. Thank you, Chair Lind. Um, yeah, full, fully supportive of this. Um, as I, you know, as I've said in the past, the county uh, went out and uh, did a similar process of um, getting bonds for our pension obligations, um, and it's going to save us a lot of money as well. Um, I think the best analogy I've heard is that this is like refinancing your house, and um, of course, it's a historically great opportunity to do that. Um, and, I, and I think it just uh, goes to show you that we're doing this uh, none too soon, given that the Fed has announced they're going to be raising interest rates in March. I'm glad we're going to be getting this in mid-February. So thank you uh, to all staff for um, moving this along as quickly as possible. Agreed. Thank you. Any other hands? Any other comments? Any comments from the public? Seeing no hands. I'll move the recommended action. Okay. I heard the motion by McPherson. Not sure who the second was from. Second by Koenig. Thank you. And roll call vote. Director Downey? Aye. Director Dutra? Aye. Director Collentary Johnson? Aye. Director Koenig? Aye. Director Lind? Aye. Director McPherson? Are you muted? Oh, you're bru muted, Bruce. Aye. Okay. Director Myers? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Parker? Aye. Director Peterson? Aye. And Director Rockton? Aye. And the motion passes. Unanimously, thank you. Thank you. Well, now we get to go into the fun things after some of the business, and that's the presentation of Employee Longevity Awards. And I get the honor to do that. So I'm gonna bring these up on my screen. I won't be able to see all of you for a moment, but I want to start with uh, acknowledging Ron Bushnell, Santa Cruz native. Ron started his career with Metro as a bus operator, but has been transit supervisor for the past five years. He enjoys the challenging daily dynamic nature of supervision on the road and thrives on keeping Metro buses operations running smoothly. Other than Metro, his personal interests are fitness, snowboarding, cooking and entertaining. So a round of applause virtually for Ron, please. And I'm not, let me look to see if Ron might be here. I know some, I don't, I don't see him. Um, Ron, if you're here, raise your hand so we know. But I don't see him. No. All right, next, uh, Blanca Asu Valdez. Blanca is passionate about her job as a bus operator. She loves helping the community, especially the elderly and persons with disabilities. She is a caring and compassionate person and has received several commendations from the public. As such, she is a safe driver and has loved her job for the past 10 years. In her spare time, she enjoys gardening, traveling with her husband, hiking, learning new languages, and has recently picked up learning to play guitar. Wow, impressive. Uh, round of applause for Blanca. And I'm looking, I do not see Blanca here. And 
Okay, she's probably out on the, in their bus and working for us. Next is Howard James. Howard is one of those people that has an infectious smile. He always comes to work with a great attitude and seems to never have a bad day. He has always been dependable and makes the effort to assist passengers with transfers and information. Thank you, Howard. And another round of applause. I'm looking for Howard, I don't see him as well. Next, we have Elizabeth Thompson. Liz's career with Metro has mostly been in supervision. As the second most senior transit supervisor, she can make the challenging job of running daily bus operations look easier than it really is. Liz takes pride in her job, is a true professional, especially when handling emergencies. Liz enjoys her trips to Hawaii and is a true cat lover, as demonstrated when she recently rescued a mom with all of her kittens. All have warm, loving homes, thanks to Liz. Well, that warms my heart. Elizabeth, thank you. And again, round of applause. And I'm still watching. I thought I saw Elizabeth earlier, but I do not see her here. Okay. Um, I may have missed. Then I have Lyle Tolin. I'm not sure. I hope I'm Tolin. Lyle's service to Metro in the community has been a job he is very proud of. Each day of work, he commits to performing his duties as a professional bus operator. He is always willing to go the extra step to help his customers. Lyle plans to retire with Metro just as his father did, keeping it in the family. Thank you, Lyle. And again, round of applause. Okay. Eduardo Villa, Villa, no, Villa Lobos. I, I'm so sorry. I hope I came close. Yeah, you, Lobos. Oh, thank you, Mike. Edgar has always looked out for the safety of his passengers, especially during a crisis. He is calm and level-headed and is a great example of a true professional in all situations. Edgar looks forward to many more years serving the community of Santa Cruz County. Thank you, Edgar. And I don't see him as well, but a round of applause. And now we're going to 15-year employee bios. Dean Brown has enjoyed working for Metro. He's always available to put in extra time to keep service on the road, enjoys being outdoors on his time off, and especially on a dirt bike. Thank you, Dean. 15 years. Then we have um, Antonio, Tony Castillo. Tony has been with Metro since December 2007, started as an entry-level mechanic. He was promoted to mechanic two in 2008. In 2013, he was again promoted to lead mechanic, mechanic, and in 2017, he became a supervisor. During his free time, Tony enjoys surf fishing, working on his 1959 Buick, attending car shows with his son. Tony also assists his son with editing videos for his YouTube channel, Cars and, and Chengo. Tony looks forward to many more years of service with Metro and is grateful for the opportunity Metro has given him. And a round of applause. Next, we have Efren Escamillo. Efren was born in Tijuana, Mexico. He came to the U.S. when he was nine years old. Growing up, Efren worked in the fields and he graduated from high school. He enrolled in the U.S. Marine Corps from 1982 to 1985. Before he came to Metro, he drove both fixed route and paratransit for the County Express in San, ben San Benito County. Ephraim enjoys jogging, tennis, reading, camping, and hiking. Thank you, Ephraim, and thank you for your service in the Marines as well. Round of applause. And we have Peggy Fletcher. Fletcher. Peg was born and raised in a small town in Ohio, graduated from Ohio State with a BA in communications. Before Metro, she worked in television as a producer, newscast director for over 25 years. She, her partner, and children moved to Aptos in 2006 to be closer to family. Peg states there isn't any other job that allows you on a daily basis to experience the healthy, I mean, ex I'm sorry, experience the beauty of Santa Cruz County and also serve its citizens. It's been a great ride. Well, thank you, Peggy. We next have Leo Herrera. Born in Watsonville, graduated from Watsonville High School. He has two brothers that have also worked for Metro, Tony retired and Oscar. Before coming to work Metro at Metro, he worked for waste management and couch distributors. 
Leo enjoys fixing motorcycles and cars. He also enjoys traveling. Thank you, Leo. Next, we have Hung Lee. Hung is an operator with all the information for customers and coworkers. He's very knowledgeable in many areas, especially in cooking. He enjoys his trips back home to visit family in China. Thank you, Hung. We have Todd Pinsky. Todd is one of those operators that enjoys his daily challenges and interactions with the public. He has always been dependable and ready for each workday. Todd has many interesting stories from his life and also hidden talents, such as being a published author. Todd always looks out for the safety of all, and he does his best to protect Metro and the community. We next move to 20-year employee bios. Mario Arilano, Arilano, Mario walks in to start a shift with a great attitude. He always has a pleasant greeting for everyone, never seems to have a bad day. He makes 20 years of service seem effortless. He is a safe driver and he is appreciated by his customers. Thank you, Mario. Then we have John Bartholomew. John is known as Johnny Metro, takes his job as a transit bus operator very seriously. He is proud of his service to the community and he enjoys his work. He always offers great service to all operators, drawing from his 20 years of devoted service to Metro. Thank you, John. Wow, 20 years. Oh, I do not, I'm going to have, uh, Don, I don't have Rhonda's letter. Can, I'm going to come back to, oh. to it. And um, and if you can, oh, that was attached to the back of that, the back of the bios. Um, I will look for it because I'm on my screen. Okay, it's not showing. Okay. Um, we have Harlan Glattis receiving the award in absentia. We'll have Delvis, and I will go back to to uh, Rhonda. Delvis is a dedicated employee and enjoys his daily interactions with the public. When help is needed to cover service, he is the first to step up. He's grateful for Metro and being able to own a home in the Redwoods. Delvis uh, enjoys his time with his wife, two children, and is a lover of various forms of art and music. And let me see, I think I found... Oh, good, because Rhonda. my system crashed. <laughs> uh, sorry, I did find it. Um, so Rhonda, oh my goodness. Um, and this is the handwritten one? Yes. Okay. Hi, number 493, that's me. Rhonda Carter, also known as a nice bus driver lady with a pretty flower in her head. When I first became a bus rider, I quickly realized how important we are in our community and to the people that rely on our services and not just taking people here and there. When each one of us pulls into a bus stop and opens our door, how we interact with that person boarding is so important. We had a chance to make someone's day a little bit better. I've reminded myself daily for almost 20 years that when I pull into a bus stop and open my doors, I don't know what's going on with that person. They could have lost someone important to them, lost a job, a home. They could be depressed, struggling with anything, or just feel not noticed. So every time I make sure to say hi or good morning. And when, when they deboard, I always tell them to have a great day. I love it. I love driving my bus, and I so enjoy the community that rides with me, that to have an opportunity to put a smile on someone's face is wonderful. My years here at Santa Cruz Metro have been and have been an adventure from lays off, lays, layoffs, strikes, contract negotiations, management changes, union, brothers and sisters and supervisors retiring and passing on, and now this pandemic. I love my Metro family. They're all amazing people. I was a single mom and raised a son and fostered another. I took care of my grandmother and my mother. I could not have done this without my job and the support of my Metro family. So I say thank you, Santa Cruz Metro, for hiring me and making it possible to enrich my life. Wow. Thank you all. Wow, what a blessing to have so many, um, you know, appreciative employees that, uh, that, 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 uh, Show, share their appreciation and service so well, and a lot of longevity, so thanks so much. I next have retiree um, resolutions of appreciation, and I know Dennis Baldwin is here, so I'm going to get those ready. 
So Dennis, um, Dennis's career with Metro started 37 years ago. Goodness. He was always, has always been active participant in all Metro activities. From Metro's baseball teams, company picnics, community events, Dennis would always be ready to get involved and motivate others. As a father, he has a strong protective instinct, but it was part of his character to look out for, some, for everyone else, especially as passengers. During his career, he received commendations from Metro. There are several attached, and the board of directors when his bus was caught in a police shooter on Procal Avenue. Dennis's bus was in the middle, caught in the crossfire. He protected his passengers by physically assisting them to take cover during the gunfire. Dennis was modest, humble, and felt it was just instinct and something anyone would have done. I wish that were true, Dennis. You, you were definitely above and beyond. He loves his Metro family. He will miss everyone. Dennis will enjoy his retirement in beautiful Santa Cruz and take advantage of every moment spent with his lovely wife, Lenore, and family and many friends. Thank you, Dennis. And I want a round of applause, but I also want to offer him a moment if he'd like to share a few words. Dennis, would you, Dennis Baldwin, would you like to speak? If, do you know how to, can you raise a hand if you'd like to? He just raises it next to his head if he's here and doesn't have yeah. to do an electronic thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna look and see if I can see Dennis on the screen. And if uh, Don, if you can yeah, help I'm looking me. to. If if uh, he would like to speak, we'd love to hear from you. But if uh, if you would rather just uh, let us share our appreciation. Thank you for your service and wishing you the very best in your retirement. Oh, there his hand goes up. All right. Join us, Dennis. And Kingston, can you help us? Okay. Try now. All right. Hello. Hi. Hey. Um, thanks for all the the great words. I'm um, recovering from surgery. Oh. Uh, and um, I'm kind of slow right now. Well, you know what? You earn a right to take a little rest and recover. And we wish you well. Um, Hope, you, hope after you recover, you have some exciting plans for your retirement. Yeah, to learn how to walk again. <laughs> hey, if you can learn to drive that bus and protect people in a shootout, you can learn to walk again. It's pretty hard. I'm, um, I had a stroke on the left side. I'm so sorry. Well, we will keep you in our thoughts and just wish you the best. And thank you for coming to the meeting and, and uh, letting us appreciate you. Well, thank you guys for appreciating me. All right. Take care. I will. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. Next, we have Alex Clifford. Um, and the, I have both his bio that uh, served with the general manager seven and a half years. Um, I'm, I have a mayor's proclamation. I know that Bruce McPherson, I believe, has one as well. And I don't, Bruce, are you still with us? I know he had another meeting he had to head to. Well, I will share. I don't see Bruce. So I will share, summarize the proclamation that I have uh, in front of me. Alex Clifford has served with the distinction for over seven years as Santa Cruz Metro Transit District's CEO General Manager. During his tenure, he helped guide Metro through unprecedented challenges um, passed for, posed first by the existing 6.3 million structural deficit, fiscal deficit, then by COVID-19 pandemic. As a result of his leadership, the transit services that Metro's committees depend on are well prepared to survive the COVID-19 pandemic and will emerge equipped 
with the resources needed to improve services and address the congestion and connectivity issues that will return. Mr. Clifford's accomplishments include tackling the structural deficit guiding metro through the COVID pandemic with no employee layoffs during either period and with the utmost concern given to employee and customer safety. Throughout his years of service, Mr. Clifford led Metro to make major improvements in the quality of his public transit service to include establishing a robust bus replacement plan, overseeing the completion of several important public works projects, procurement of several key technology projects, creating a zero emissions bus plan, and initiating the process to replace Metro's aging enterprise, enterprise resource planning system. As a 30-year leader in the public transit realm, Mr. Clifford was able to address Metro's challenges, whether big or small, and in partnership with his leadership team, he created, fully funded, uh, created a fully funded complex reserves plan, a number of new fiscally responsible policies and plans, initiated the process of paying off Metro's unfunded purse liability, and created and filled key departments and roles within Metro. And as he retires, he leaves Metro in a solid position with his bus and paratransit services poised to regain ridership and ready to take on the next generation of growth and mobility options with a competent and dedicated senior leadership team. Um, I, Donna Lynn, Mayor of the City of Scotts Valley, on behalf of our entire City of Scotts Valley Council and staff, hereby express our appreciation to Alex Clifford for his leadership and dedicated service. He will be missed. Thank you. And we next have George Felder. George has made 37 years of service behind the wheel. Oops, I've got, I've got the wrong one, I think. Nope, I don't. Um, look effortless, he never complained about a single day of work and was an outstanding employee and coworker. George was a true professional in every sense, especially when assisting and looking out for his passengers. His laughter and his smile will be missed by all. And I know he submitted a letter and I will look for that, but I don't have it right here. Melody Martin started work for Santa Cruz Metro in 2004, is retiring after 17 years with the agency. Before working with Santa Cruz Metro, Melody served the community by being lead, I'm sorry, by being Head Start preschool driver and then working for Liftline that eventually merged with Metro where she became an asset to our community service department. As a customer services representative, Melody took a proactive role in her position. She arrived early to work to prepare for her work day and was always ready to take calls for our Paracruz clients and provide route information promptly. Melody was flexible, always ready to step into any task assigned to benefit support the department. Melody has made lasting impact on customer service department team and our customers, many of which still call and ask for her by name because she ensured that all customers felt acknowledged and were taken care of. Melody will be missed by our customer service department and we wish her all the best in her well-earned retirement. And last of the retirees, I have Gina. Gina was a member, that's only problem with the landline is you can't mute a landline. Gina was a member of our administrative department for seven years in the capacity of executive assistant to the CEO general manager. She also served as recording secretary to the board of directors. She acted as representative for Metro at various internal and public functions and welcomed all to Metro. Her coworkers will remember her best as a resident foodie and love when she brought in her latest creation to share with others. And thankfully we got to uh, wish and send uh, Gina off at uh, our recent uh, workshop. I know that there is a letter and Donna, I don't have it. Do you, can you, do you don't? It was at the back of the packet again. All right, let me um, just double check. That was the last of our retirees. Um, it was uh, in the form of like an email. It looked like an email. All right, let me see if I can't pull that up but I am not seeing it. I'm sorry, my system still isn't. That's working. all right. I'm, I'm trying to check for it. I, you know, after those years, we definitely don't want to neglect. But... I have it up, Donna, if you- Oh, thank you. Really Please. Oh, I would love you. to have you read that, okay. if you wouldn't mind. 
I would like to start off by thanking Santa Cruz Metro for the opportunity to serve the community of Santa Cruz. I have enjoyed my 37 years of service. My retirement is bittersweet due to the fact that I will miss my fellow operators and supervisors, who I consider my second family union strong. I would also like to thank the Board of Directors for acknowledging my service. Thank you sincerely, George Felder. Thank you. You're welcome. And Chair Lynn, uh, there should also be a proclamation for the outgoing CEO that was prepared and I'm not seeing it in the packet. Uh, Donna, do you? I missed that too. I haven't seen it, but I haven't gotten all my emails. Did you send it, Julie? I did. Oh, okay. I did well, Let me not... see if I can find that quickly okay. and send okay. it. And I'll okay. just look at and be prepared on the, um, oh, I actually see it too as, as, as well. All it's right. in there somewhere. I saw it last night. Yeah. Well, mine was, mine was, but I, I, I was looking and asked Julie about that too, because I knew there was a Metro one as well. Um, we, what we can do in the, as we, I can move ahead a moment while you look for that and see if there's a Mac update. Um, do we want to make a, a motion on the resolutions, retiree resolutions? I'll make that motion. I'll that's, second that, that that's motion. A, approving all of those resolutions. Thank second. You. Okay. And second. All right. And then we'll we'll do a roll call, and we have Donna looking, so you probably have a hard time doing a roll call. Do we get discussion <laughs> okay. or no? Uh, yes, yes, uh, if there are comments or discussion. Oh, I just wanted to say congratulations to everybody for all the accomplishments. Um, good luck to all those who are retiring. Um, and, you know, so I want to say um, especially thank you to Donna, who's who was around for so long and um, probably one of the best people to uh, keep us all in check. So thank you. Okay. Gina. Gina's, Gina, I think. Yes, we, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I'm looking at Donna Land. I said I meant Gina. Not, but thank you. Mike. I knew you meant Gina. <laughs> All right. Did you find that, Donna? Or no, it's Julie. Are you? Did you find the? I do have it. I'm going to send it to Donna. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe go to the Mac. Yeah. So let's go to the uh, Mac oh. report. Let's do a, a uh, roll call. call. Thank you. Okay, so Mike made a motion and Larry uh, seconded it. Yes. All right. Uh, Director Downey? Aye. Director Dutra? Aye. Director Colentary Johnson? Aye. Director Koenig? Aye. Director Lind? Aye. Director McPherson? Absolutely. Uh, he had uh, Director Myers? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Parker? Aye. Director Peterson? Aye. And Director Rockin? Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you. So we will <clears throat> look, I will go to the MAC report as we pull up the other proclamation resolution. And that would be ja James Von Henry, MAC chair. If James is here. Yes, I am indeed here. Uh, James Von Handy. I am chair of the Metro Advisory Committee, uh, serving for my second year in that capacity. And I am reporting on the second half of our MAC meetings from 2021. Um, normally, this would be done in November, but I was unable to do so at that time for a conflict of meetings. Um, so, a little bit late for those of you who are new uh, to the board. Uh, the Metro Advisory Committee is uh, consists of uh, members of the public who have applied to represent interests of, of the public and to serve in supporting of the board. Um, in the second half of 2021, um, we continue to be extremely committed to um, the, the board and to uh, the citizens of Santa Cruz County who use Metro Transit. Um, we are especially, I uh, wanted to acknowledge how much the board and our uh, bus operators have done uh, during these COVID times to ensure that public transit service serves the community and serves it well. Um, 
COVID is a constant theme, as I'm sure you are all aware, and it will show up repeatedly throughout my brief summaries. Um, it began to, um, in, this, in, um, in our communication to the advisory committee, it's just something we get in most meetings. Um, Vice Chair Martinez was informally asked by a bus operator about uh, training on wheelchair assistance uh, and, and asked if based on that uh, request, if accessible service coordinated, uh, uh, an accessible service coordinator position would be filled. Uh, CEO Alex Clifford responded that the job description and Metro needs were under review, but in the meantime, customers could call customer service. Um, and as a side note, based on that, uh, MAC member James Cruz praised Paracruz for their help with people in wheelchairs and suggested that might be a resource. Um, prior to the October meeting, which was our last meeting of 2021, we received two short letters from the public advocating once again, we're adding a Metro stop at the Enterprise Technology Center in, in uh, Scotts Valley. Um, in the case of these requests, Director Ergo um, responded by letter to members of the public stating about the impediments to providing such a stop. Um, some of that is due to physical plant and obviously also to um, uh, the lack of resources in terms of um, uh, bus operator shortage and also uh, the inability to add new routes at this time. Um, uh, I, I would also point out that Director Ergo spent time investigating that, uh, that site and provided uh, detailed photographs in support of uh, the Metro's position that that's currently an unfeasible uh, possibility. Um, we also received a letter uh, from a member of the public asking for the roof vents to be opened on the Highway 17 buses for ventilation. Margo Ross, Chief Operating Officer, uh, addressed that with us and with the public, responding that uh, we cannot open those vents, but that we actually have MERV 7 filtration on Metro buses and provide that information to the public. Um, we again appreciate the board's uh, responses to, and consider responses to the public. Uh, in these matters. Um, as a routine part of the last couple of years, um, uh, CEO Alex Clifford uh, gave us a detailed accounting of the current COVID situations as they uh, occurred in August and October uh, of last year. Um, I'm aware that was before Omicron arrived in our vicinity, um, but he pointed out that um, generally speaking, there had only been one infection uh, among uh, uh, um, Metro uh, operators uh, from someone who was fully vaccinated. But he did point out that we continued to monitor CDC, Cal, OSHA, county and state health agencies, and to make any necessary adjustments to the services that we offer. Um, and this, and he said they're investigating all employee vaccines, the vaccination mandate. Um, <laughs> which we had asked, uh, which uh, one of us on our committee had asked, well, I, unfortunately, I can't tell you who, I don't, didn't record that. Um, uh, we did, um, Ma oh yeah, Mac, Master, uh, Mac member, Mr. Pisano, especially thanked the Metro for keeping bus operators and passengers safe during COVID. Uh, he asked uh, whether or not that extended to flu shots. CEO Clifford said they are not mandatory, but that you have a flu clinic every fall in the Metro. Um, Ms. Elsie, who's also a member, asked about Highway 17 passenger restrictions in August and again in October. Um, in August at that time, VTA uh, had restrictions on a number of people that could be in the, on the bus and we had to abide, uh, abide by those. Um, but in October, those were supposedly lifted. Obviously, I don't know what the current status is given Omicron. Um, finally, um, Ms. Elsie asked for an uh, update on the bus operator shortages. CEO Clifford uh, explained to us uh, that we are actively recruiting and human resources and marketing are attending local events, advertising the radio and television, and promoting a $4,000 signing bonus at that time. Uh, Ms. Ms. Taylor, also a member, asked if the Metro had considered operating, uh, raising bus operator pay. And as already noted in this meeting, 
uh, CEO Clifford was able to say that Metro bus operators are already right uh, near the top 10% of highest paid operators nationally. Um, in information technology systems update, uh, IT and ITS director Isaac Holly uh, told the Metro is working diligently to make the intelligent transportation succeed, but that the, the vendor had failed uh, the Metro and that Metro had sent a letter of default outlining the requirements that had to be met within 30 days. NAC members unanimously thanked Director Holly for his efforts and dedication. We know how trying this has been for him and for the Metro in general. Uh, in October, Director Holly announced the Metro had issued a note of, note of termination of contract to that vendor and was working to award the contract to a new vendor. Um, Ms. Elsie and Mr. Pisano offered to be beta testers with the new vendor when that new vendor is selected and in place. Um, uh, as a regular feature of the MAC meetings, um, John Ergo, Planning and Development Director, summarizes quarterly ridership reports in August and October MAC meetings. He noted weekly ridership was increased by, had it increased approaching 50% of pre COVID numbers in August and ridership approached 90% on the USC routes, especially on the new route 18. Um, by October, he said that local ridership was about 65% of pre-COVID numbers, uh, which we were greatly heartened to hear. And the Highway 17 was at about 33% of capacity. Um, now also, as part of his discussion, Director Ergo was able to tell us that the bus stops, the new bus stop signage is in place. Uh, by October, that meant that all bus stops in the Santa Cruz County had the new bus stop signs. Um, Ms. Elsie asked for a status on researching adding a braille component to the signs. This was something she requested earlier. Um, Director Ergo said that some research had been done and some options were not possible to implement. Uh, some of that was due to the signage itself and obviously also to the expense of adding uh, full braille. One option that he did see say seemed possible is to place a marker on the poles to identify the bus stop ID. Ms. Elsie was uh, indicated that would be helpful since that information with that information one can access route information. Um, and uh, we agreed to show further discussion of that until our first meeting in February of 2022. Also on the agenda for the MAC meetings were three route request suggestions proposed by Mr. Pisano. Um, those of you who know Mr. Pisano will know that he's a very strong advocate for increasing uh, bus access and bus stops throughout Santa Cruz County. Um, Director Ergo agreed to study. Uh, so let's see, one was uh, with the, uh, the county's acquisition of a county option building in Watsonville, uh, scheduled for occupation in the 2023 timeframe. Uh, direct, um, Mr. Rosano suggested that the bus route be uh, adjusted to accommodate that location. Director Ergo agreed to study the proposal with the county, but the current workforce shortage makes it a challenge to add any service anywhere. So this affects the additional, additional requests. Mr. Rosano asked about adjusting the 69W route to service the new Kaiser facility. I believe that's somewhere off SoCal Ave. Uh, Director Ergo stated we don't have the resource to do so but that Pete Rasmussen transportation planner is working with Kaiser for Kaiser provided shuttle. Thirdly, Director Ergo again said, Metro currently does not have the resource to elevate, uh, to deviate service to the new Capitola library, which was his last request, um, Mr. Pisano's last request. Um, <clears throat> finally, um, Director Ergo <clears throat> addressed the maintenance of the CME seats at bus stops. Um, as chair, I had noticed a number of these seats uh, tend to be rusting out. Uh, um, and Director Ergo says facilities were surveying those stops, noting their condition, and he reported that Metro had spare seats that can be used to replace any in poor condition. Uh, uh, CEO Alex Clifford also suggested that uh, facilities could provide rust-oleum to seats that were rusted to counter that rusting. Um, <clears throat> Also, um, there, Director Ergo reported on the Paracruz and on-demand micro service trans, uh, service pilot program in both August and October. He indicated there was very low demand, uh, less than 10 requests a day. 
and that the micro transit service would likely be negatively affected as regular para crews use increased again. However, he noted that most micro transit customers were regular para crews users who appreciated the ability to book same day travel. Uh, finally, um, regarding um, bicycle carriages on buses, um, this has come up a number of times as a way to increase capacity. Uh, Director Ergo said research indicates the major improvements in the last 10 to 15 years was the three position bus bike rack already in use. But he said the board recognizes the limitations and will work with city and county partners to encourage more bike racks, bike lockers, and bike share programs. At the August meeting, um, CEO Ross, uh, CEO, uh, yeah, CEO Ross announced that the Santa Cruz Metro would again extend the Route 79 bus service and para cruise to the Santa Cruz County. And again, the MAC um, wanted to applaud that decision. Uh, she also noted, by the way, uh, that the Metro would have a booth at the fair with first responders and would have a new electric bus and para cruise vans on display. Um, in August, Ms. Elsie asked if the Metro planned to, re in, uh, to re reinstate the disabled passenger training. CEO, CEO Ross said that training had to be suspended due to COVID, but the ADA training is part of the syllabus. Uh, some concern, we, we expressed some concern at the loss of the, of the training, disabled training practice that branded Freeman bus operator adds that CEO Ross and Director Moses had made improvements to the training we acknowledge Ms. Elsie's concerns, but also thank CEO Ross and Director Moses and Mr. Freeman for their assurance to continue the training when safe to do so. And let's see, I think that is everything I have to offer from our last meeting. Oh, well, thank you. Very detailed report, appreciate your work. All right, here, here. it's a pleasure to serve. Here, here. Yes. We get we're so you you're getting some applause here and other here here so thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, do Julie, do you have that proclamation? I sent it or, to Anna, uh, so I'm hoping she's able to screen share. Ah. Uh, I am not. I'm having trouble opening up the the document again. Um, if I can get it open, uh, would you like me just to read it or? Why don't I see then maybe I can screen share. I'm here okay. with, give me a second. All right, I'll try to do it. So you have it open on your desktop and then yeah, it should show. Let me know. If yeah, you got it. it. That's it. it, it's there. Okay. Yeah. Woo. Okay. So Donna, how, yeah. how would you like to? I can read it if you'd like, but I'm happy to have you read it. I've been reading a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, would you know, go ahead, Mike. I just gonna say, I'm not sure it's necessary to ask. Yeah. Really. We all see it we in front can, of us. The members of the public, read can, it. Members of the public can see it as well. Give us about two minutes to read through yeah. it. And I, let I, me know. I, let me know if I need to scroll down. Maybe just a little bit, and there you go. Now we should be able to see most of it. Might be helpful if anybody's on phone. Oh. Oh, that's a point. Sorry. It would. It would take a long time to. Is there? Can someone load it to the website? Maybe. Yeah. I. I we that? can probably. Yeah. Add that to the website and then with the agenda item. And yes. it's, very, it's similar to the resolution for his retirement. Yes. Oh, you did cover the Judy K. Souza. That's a yeah, good point. Let me know if you're ready for me to scroll. I'm ready. Yeah. And maybe read the um, action items 
you know, now therefore be it resolved, maybe you can yes. those okay. Things. Now there be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Santa Cruz Metropolitan Transit District does hereby express its appreciation to Alex Clifford for his leadership and dedicated service to Metro and that the Board of Directors of the Santa Cruz Metro Transit District offers its best wishes for good health, fulfillment, and well-deserved happiness to Alex Clifford as he embarks on his next adventure. Um, passed and adopted by the Board of Superwell. We will have that as we take a vote. Okay, um, do we need a motion on that? Yes, we do. I'll, I'll move approval of this resolution. Okay. Okay. And motion and second by Koenig. All right. And okay. And roll call. Uh, Director Downey. Aye. Director Dutra. Aye. Director Colin Terry Johnson. Aye. Director Koenig. Aye. Director Lynn. Aye. Direct, uh, Director McPherson is gone. Uh, Director Myers. Aye. Director Pegler. Aye. Director Parker. Aye. Director Peterson. Are you muted, Kirsten? She is. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you, can you hear me? Yes, yes. now. There was an aye. aye. Okay. And Director Rockin. Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you. Okay, and next is the ratification of engagement letter with interim CEO. Um, and summary is that uh, Alex retired from Metro effective January 21st. On December 17th, Metro Board of Directors appointed Don Creme to the position of interim CEO GM, provided direction to staff to negotiate an engagement letter with Don. Uh, General Counsel recommends board ratification of said engagement letter. The, um, I think all of you have it here. And so um, we just uh, need a, in a ratification of the engagement letter to make this official. And I think we need a motion. I I'll move, move. I will second that. Hey, thanks, Mike. And, and thank on for stepping up into this position. So transitions are always difficult and appreciate her willingness to serve in this capacity until we have a permanent uh, uh, general manager and CEO. Agreed, thank you, Don. Okay, and roll call then is Director Downing. Aye. Director Dutra. Aye. Director Colin Terry Johnson. Aye. Director Koenig. Aye. Director Lynn. Aye. Director McPherson. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Director Myers. Aye. Director Pegler. Aye. Director Parker. Aye. Director Peterson. Aye. Director Rockin. Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you. And now, after we ratified that contract, we're gonna ask Dawn for her CEO report and COVID update. Good morning, thank you very much. Um, I just have a couple of, of um, items to share with you. I will start off with the not so great news. Um, since January 1st of this year, we've had um, 36 uh, positive cases um, for COVID. Um, obviously this is due to the Omicron variant. It is highly, highly contagious. Um, we noticed most of our, our positives within the first probably two weeks um, and have traced that back to holiday gatherings and, and things like that. Um, I am happy to report that we have not um, traced one back to Metro yet. So that's, that's, very, um, that's very good news. Um, a lot of it in the last couple of weeks actually has been um, exposure um, with children. So um, our employees with their children or nieces or nephews or things like that. And those children have been exposed by a student or a teacher and then they come home and, and um, pass that on to, to an employee. So negative, but then a bit of a positive there with that as well. So we are continuing to um, process many of those. Um, Next item, um, we have a career change uh, transfer that was done. Uh, Dalee Brubeck has transferred to our operations department um, to be administrative assistant. 
So we wish her well with her, her new career change. And then another positive item I'd like to share is that we received six new Gillig's. Um, we do have them on property now. They're being assessed by our maintenance department and we hope to have those on the street uh, within two months. Um, that is all that I have for you this morning. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, and uh, Director Dutre, you have a question. Yeah, thank and you, up. and thank you so much, Don. Um, quick question for you. So how, how are we looking with the um, last class of um, drivers that we've had? I think we started, what, with eight or 10? Where are we now with that? So we started with eight or 10 way before the before they even started. <laughs> so right. before they even, the class even started, we probably lost about five of those. Um, and then if Margo can can um, jump in, I believe we have two um, that actually have finished the class. Is that correct, Margo? Two or three? Uh, no, they're well. Prior to that, yeah, we we had two that completed the training. Uh, the current class we have, I just spoke to the training department. Um, they're doing an awesome job on um, in the class. Uh, Everybody's moving along, and um, they hope to graduate on time. How many are in that class? Am I frozen or is she frozen? Yeah, she's I, frozen. She's frozen. I don't even know who freezes anymore. <laughs> Strike and oppose. Um, there you go, Margo. You're back. Oh, no, you're frozen again. Sorry, what was the question? How, How many, many are in, in the current class? class? What was the question? How many are in the class now? Was there more than two? Oh, no. No, we okay. have... Um, We made it through the meeting, so yeah, I know. If it, if it, ha if yeah. it had to happen at any time, this was the best time to, for it to happen. Jimmy, I will get back to you with Thank that information. You. You're yeah, so um, how many graduated in the last class? Um, how many, I guess, are in the current class? And are we still offering the um, bonus? Yes, um, we are. We are. We've also opened that that bonus up to our paratransit drivers as well, because we are, are um, we have a recruitment for paratransit as well. How many drivers are we down? Are we down a lot or? Yeah. We are down currently 22. Ooh. Yeah, 22 as of the 14th. So. Okay. Um, if, if I can make a comment on, on this. Mm -hmm. um, for the people who are new to the board, uh, to our um, uh, HR department, you can get a little uh, business card that gives information about uh, applying to be a bus driver for Metro in Santa Cruz County. It's worth saying that we pay very well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll say this, bus drivers make more than lecturers at the University of California who have PhDs. So uh, or most of them have PhDs. Uh, we have an amazing benefit system uh, that covers people. There's this, just pointed out a $4,000 hiring bonus. The, you know, the day you get hired, you have $4,000. And there are also incentives for other employees to recommend people. But if you get these cards, you can pass them out to people in the county. It's a really good career. And as noted by these people who we just recognized for serving us for between 20 and 37 years in a couple of cases, um, it's, a, it's a career. It's not just a temporary job. It's a really well-paid career with good benefits. And it really does have, help to have the board members reach out to members of the public because I think people are not aware of this. The, um, I'll, I'll add that it, the... Uh, the, the people who often drop out of training, it's not because it's so hard to learn to drive a bus. The, uh, what's amazing about our drivers, um, all of our employees, but particularly our drivers, is their public service and their ability to relate to the public. And the, what we can, we, we can quickly train someone to drive one of these buses. What we can't train people to do is be good, good at public relations and dealing with other people. And so, as long, so really what you need for this job is uh, a clean driving record, a high school diploma or, or GED, and, and uh, an ability to work with public and, and you know, be a, a good, in terms of good you know, personal relations. So 
really want to reach out to people and try and help us because we have a huge gap of drivers. We were down as pointed out 22 drivers and our class has, I think it's something like six, but we'll get their official number. But so we're hiring maybe if we, if all of, let's say they all get through and the others, we'll have hired eight people to fill a gap of 22 drivers. So we still need a lot more and the, the uh, board of directors can help us in this process. And they're recruitment cards that, yeah, you can get a stack of them. So uh, director Kalantari Johnson. Thank you for that, Director Rotkin. I was going to um, see if staff could send uh, the board of directors um, like social media messaging or things we can send out through our emails. Uh, if you have that, that's another really great way to do the outreach. And, and I would be more than happy to do that multiple times. Yes, yeah, so we've done um, commercials and radio ads, and we have links to those, and we have sent them out on our own social media between myself and my deputy director. We've sent those out, and, and our marketing director, Danielle, has helped us tremendously with that. So, yes, when we do that, we will send that out to the board as well so that you can you can share as well, and we will get you some record, recruitment cards. I, I want to say it might take a little bit to, to get some new ones because the ones we have, it doesn't have all of our social media tags on it. And I'd like to give you the most current one. So um, within the next month or so, you guys uh, should receive a stack. We'll send those to you. Great. And, and when you're posting things, I mean, I would be happy to be tagged on your posts. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I send them out like on LinkedIn so I can um, get with you. Or, or if you're on LinkedIn, if you guys are all on LinkedIn, I can attach to you and then we can do that as well. Perfect, thanks. Mm -hmm. No more problem. Director Koenig. Thank you, yeah, just a question. So with the, the shortage of 22 drivers, um, are we, how much of that are we able to cover with overtime pay for other drivers? Uh, and how much are we actually reducing service? And then when we make, if we do have to make um, a reduction in service, uh, how do we select which routes to, you know, where to cut a bus? Um, if I can answer that question, so right now we are covering it with overtime. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, we are covering uh, any shortages with overtime. Um, at this time, we don't have plans to reduce service, but when we do reduce service, we're very strategic. We're not going to reduce service on a route that is um, an hour headway, certainly. You know, certainly a route that's 10 or 15 minutes headway will reduce service, um, you know, one way. Um, the dispatchers are very good at um, kind of gauging where and when we can reduce service. Um, they do a good job at that. Um, and as I said earlier, at this time we have no, we're kind of working within the boundaries of the number of um, operators that are available to us. Um, so luckily um, the run cut reflects the number of operators that we currently have. Thank you. Director Downing. Uh, yes, I because I'm new, I haven't spent a lot of time looking at the way that you recruit uh, new bus drivers. And I was curious is, um, have you had current bus drivers do testimonials about why they wanna work, why they enjoy working for Metro? And <clears throat> um, have you posted any of those on things like Instagram? Um, I don't know if Metro has their own Instagram account. Um, I'm just curious if you've done work like that. Yes, I actually have seen the ads, by the way. Thank you on uh, the really nice uh, the ads I'm seeing on TV and, and social media. I'm seeing it on Facebook. I, I'm seeing it on my Instagram. So yes, I, I have seen that, but, but please, Margaret, go ahead and share. Um, well, I can share that part. So, or Don. Yes, we, we have done. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, we have done commercials, and, and within those commercials, and Danielle can jump in too. Um, we have used employee testimonials. So, um, and I believe Danielle, you had something upcoming as well. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, well, tomorrow we're doing a KSEO interview about our open promotions, um, and then we do have the testimonials from drivers and all the other vacancies that are running on Comcast right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have other additional radio spots and plugs um, in, you know, on websites and some printed magazines and things like that. So we're trying to get the word out there more. No, I've, I really think you've, I've seen a lot and it's, it's a good job and I, I really creative and I love the testimonials. It's, um, you know, so many of the ads, you just kind of 
zone out and these really do catch your attention. So good work. It's, it's also worth noting this is a national problem. It it's is. not unique to our district. And that's not a reason to slow down or not do our best to really address it because it's a very serious problem. But, but we're not alone in this. And not even our, our, even our industry is not alone in this. It's just really hard to hire people these days for a variety of reasons we don't have time to get into this morning. But serious issue. Okay. If there are no other questions, let me make sure um, if there are any hands on the public. If not, then uh, we'll move. Oh, wait, to... there is one hand that just went oh, up. All right. I uh, looked too quickly. James Sandoval. Yeah. Oh. You're muted. Kingston, can you help? There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I think we spoke on to how we could, you know, tackle this problem together, which is, you know, what we were talking about er earlier by um, bring, bringing back the sense of family. I really feel like um, a lot of these operators, when we felt the support um, from Metro, that they were out recruiting for us, you know, family and friends. And when, you know, we felt like this was a great place to work, um, the recruiting kind of did itself. Um, we have a lot of family that works here, um, dads, moms, sisters, brothers, and, um, you know, I, I've, I've seen a difference when it comes to recommending this job to their own families because they don't, it's, it's just not the same feeling anymore. And that's why we're really hoping to bring that sense back because I feel like everything will take care of itself um, if we, if we were to accomplish that. So I don't know where else I could appropriately bring this up, but I'm asking Donna Lynn, you as the chair of the board of directors, to uh, call a special me meeting before uh, February 18th, which is the deadline um, for our, us to get an answer to Senator uh, John Laird regarding the PERB issue. It sounds like some board members are wanting to discuss this a little further and look into it a little bit more. And I'm hoping we could do that together. Um, we have had a couple more signatures come through on that letter since this meeting. And I'm just really hoping that, you know, we could open up the dialogue and, and look into this together and work on this together. And we really hope that you give us this chance. Uh, the next board meeting is not till February 25th, which is after the deadline. I already got confirmation from John Laird that he can't hold anything for us. He needs an answer before then. So I'm hoping that you exercise, or I believe it's article three in the bylaws for the board of directors. Just call a special meeting to put this as an agenda for us to discuss further. All right, thank you. Thank you. The and obviously there was a motion related to that uh, for after the CEO comes in. Next, moving to the announcement, of next regular meeting will be Friday, February 25th, 9 a.m., and it will also be via teleconference. Stay well, everybody. Um, thank you all. And uh, Thank you, Don, for your work, and Donna, with all the challenges with IT. So um, you're really doing yeoman's work, so thanks so much. Welcome to the new board members. Yes, yes, yeah. welcome all. Rebecca, uh, Ari, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi, thank you.